When it came time to leave the hospital, I wasn't afraid to leave at all. I was definitely ready to go. The recovery had to begin, and I was anxious to get that going. At some point, I recall that a young nurse came into the room, and she said, with her hands on her hips, framing the doorway, she looked at me and she said, now just what's the problem here? And I said, I'm afraid to leave. And she said, yes, you are. I can see that you are, and it happens to many patients. But you are going, and you're going today. From the caregiver's end of it, the most important thing I found was to take care of yourself. You need to to make sure that you're taking care of yourself, that you're staying healthy. And you it's hard, but you have to try to keep the stress managed. You feel it catching up with you at different moments, like all of a sudden, I'm really tired, you know, and you realize that you have been sort of juggling all of these things. But in the heat of everything, you just do what you have to do. I had to get out once in a while, not be afraid to leave, and don't feel like you're turning your back on them. And I had to really take a year out of my life, at least a year, and just concentrate on getting well. That was not very easy, but it, it, it was reality. You're certainly severely compromised when you come home, and you have to rest a lot, and you sleep a lot, and you're not fully aware of what's going on. It's not over when you come home at all. Um, there's still a lot of work to be done, but it's a totally joyful time. I mean, it, and probably easier for me to say that than for Stuart, because it, when he came home at first, he was clearly panic-stricken to be taken from his safe environment where he was surrounded by doctors and help. I know that was difficult. Physically, I didn't have the energy that I once had. Um, I had to build all that back up again, even though I was doing a little bit in the hospital. And you had that good days and bad days. Fatigue seemed to have been a very big thing for me. Um, I took two naps a day and still went to bed by 8 o'clock and slept all night long. I was just that tired, it seemed. Once I got home, I would say the most difficult part of the recovery was regaining stamina to the point that I could lead a more normal life. You know, I had this totally unrealistic, uh, anticipated uh, view that I would go right back to work. I had my transplant, I, I had been cured, and I'd go back to work and be all over. I was very naive in terms of the amount of time required. They are tired. We have put them through quite an ordeal. And so it may be all they can do in a day to take a shower and then rest, and then get up and eat, and then rest, and go to their physician's uh, appointment, and then rest. So it is a, it is a very fatigue-laden time that most people have a difficult time with because they can't imagine it. Well, at first it's very basic substance. Finds, you know, make me cream of wheat for six weeks, because that's all I could eat. <laughs> the kids couldn't, they had to leave school, leave daycare, because anything they bring into the house or anything, you have no immune system, you're totally susceptible. I think that it, coming home was frightening for Stu, and the kids were a big part of it, because it's hard to say, don't hug me now, don't kiss me now, and then there's the whole emotional thing. He would just cry and get so upset because he wanted to be completely open and, you know, um, affectionate with them, but he truly was afraid. My caregiver was very patient with me, and he taught me to be patient. There were times that I was called from the hospital um, after having a blood draw, and they would say, oh, your blood clotted, you have to come back down and take blood. I thought that was the end of the world, and he would say, what do you have to do? And I said, nothing. He says, I don't mind taking you back. So what is the problem? And I realized that if he didn't have a problem with these things, I shouldn't have a problem either. All I had to do was be the patient and be a patient patient. When patients and their families come to transplant, 
our experience has been that they concentrate on the transplant period, the chemotherapy and radiation that they might receive, the hospital stay, the fact that they're going to be sick, and then they're going to get better and, and go home. And from our perspective, that going home process can sometimes be as difficult as the, as the hospital process.